I'll just cut to the chase. Big tech's out to get conservatives. That's not a suspicion. That's not a hunch. That's a fact. July 20th, 2020, Google removes the home pages of Breitbart and the Daily Caller. Just last night, we learned Google has censored Breitbart so much, traffic has declined 99%. June 16th, 2020, Google threatens to demonetize and ban the Federalists. April 19th, 2020, Google and YouTube announce a policy censoring the content that conflicts with recommendations of the World Health Organization. Now think about that. The World Health Organization, the organization that lied to us, the organization that shielded for China, and if you contradict something they say, they can say whatever they want. They can lie for China. They can chill for China. You say something against them, you get censored. June 29, 2020, Amazon bans President Trump's account on Twitch after he raises concerns about defunding the police. June 4, 2020, Amazon bans a book critical of the coronavirus lockdowns written by a conservative commentator. May 27, 2020, Amazon Smile won't let you give to the Family Research Council and the Alliance Defense Fund, but you can give to Planned Parenthood. Facebook, June 19th, 2020, takes down posts from President Trump's re-election campaign. November 1st, 2018, Facebook silences a pro-life organization's advertisement. May 19th, 2016, Facebook, former Facebook employees admit Facebook routinely suppresses conservative views. And I haven't even mentioned Twitter, who we actually invited, Mr. Chairman. We asked for you guys to invite him as one of our witnesses. You guys said, no, I haven't even mentioned them two years ago. They shadow banned two members of this committee. Four members of Congress were shadow banned two years ago. 435 in the House, 100 in the Senate, 535, only four. Only four. Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan, only four get shadow banned. And of course, what did Mr. Dorsey tell us? He said, oh, it was just a glitch in our algorithm. Just a gl I asked him, what did you put in the algorithm? The name's Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan? I mean, if I had a nickel for every time I heard it was just a glitch, I wouldn't be as wealthy as our witnesses, but I'd be doing all right. We've heard that excuse time and time again. May 28th, Twitter censors President Trump's tweet on the riots in Minneapolis. May 29th, 2020, Twitter censors White House, the White House for quoting the president's comments about the riots in Minneapolis. June 23rd, 2020, Twitter censors the president again for saying he'll enforce the rule of law against any autonomous zone in Washington, D.C. You can tweet all you want about the autonomous zone that happened in Seattle, but the president tweets that he's not going to have one in Washington, D.C. Oh, 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 nope, can't do that. You get banned, you get censored. Dozens of examples. Oh, I forgot one. I forgot one. Just last week, July 21st. July 21st, here's what Twitter did. The leader of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran, this is, this is, this is from the largest state sponsor of terrorism. Twitter allows this tweet, quote, the Islamic Republic of Iran will never forget the martyrdom of Soleimani and will definitely strike a reciprocal blow in the United States. So you can threaten the citizens of this great country, the leader of the largest state sponsor of terrorism, that's just fine. But oh, the president says he's not going to allow some autonomous zone in D.C. and he gets, he gets censored. All kinds of examples. Most of them from this year, and that's what's, that's what's, I think, critical for us all to understand. Most of them from this year and election year. And that's what concerns me and so many Americans. Because we saw what Google did in 2016. We all know about the email the day after the election where top executives at Google email chain where they talked about the silent donation Google made to the Clinton campaign. Now, thank goodness it wasn't enough. And in spite of their efforts to help Clinton, President Trump won. But we're 97 days before an election. And the power, as the previous chairman and ranking member have said, the power these companies have to impact what happens during an election, what people, what American citizens get to see prior to their voting is pretty darn important. That's why this committee hearing is important. Look, we... We all think the free market's great. We think competition's great. We love the fact that these are American companies. But what's not great is censoring people, censoring conservatives, and trying to impact elections. And if it doesn't end, there has to be consequences. There have to be consequences. That's what I'm concerned about, and I think what so many Americans are concerned about. So I look forward to hearing from our witnesses, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Fauci, do protests increase the spread of the virus? 
do protests increase the spread of the virus? Uh, I think I can make a general statement. Well, half a million protesters on June 6 alone, yeah. I'm just asking, that number of no. people, does yeah. it increase the spread of the virus? Cra crowding together, particularly when you're not wearing a mask, contributes to the spread of the virus. Should we limit the protesting? I, I'm not sure what you mean, should, how do we say limit the protesting? Should government limit the protesting? I, I, I don't think that's relevant to... Well, you just said if it increases the spread of the virus, I'm just asking, should we limit it? Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. Well, you make all kinds of recommendations. You, no. you make comments on dating, on baseball, on everything no. you can imagine. I'm just asking, you just said it, yeah. that protests increase the spread. No. I'm just asking you, should we try to limit the protests? No, I think I would leave that to people who have more of an, a, a position to do that. I can tell you... Government stopping people from going to church, Dr. Fauci? Okay. Yeah. Last week in the Calvary Chapel case, five liberals on the Supreme Court said it was okay for Nevada <clears throat> to limit church services. Governor, I, I mean, Justice Gorsuch said it best. He said, there's no, there's no world in which the Constitution permits Nevada to favor Caesar's palace over Calvary Chapel. I'm just asking, is there a world where the Constitution says you can favor one First Amendment liberty protesting right. over another practicing your faith? I'm not favoring anybody over anybody. I'm just making a statement that's a broad statement that avoid crowds of any type, no matter where you are, because that leads to the acquisition and transmission. And I don't judge one crowd versus another crowd. When you're in a crowd, particularly if you're not wearing a mask, that induces it's just, the it's spread. A simple, it's a simple question, doctor. Should we limit the protest? Government is obviously yeah. lim limiting people yeah. going to church. And, and look, I, I'm there's, not been gonna... no, there's been no violence that I, I yeah. can see at church. I haven't seen people yeah. during a church service go out and, and harm police officers right. or burn buildings. But we know that. I mean, for 63 days, right. nine weeks, it's been happening in Portland. Right. Yeah. Well, one night in Chicago, 49 officers were injured, but no limit to pro no limit to protest. But boy, you can't go to church on Sunday. What was the, uh, I don't know how many times I can answer that. I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm just going to tell you. You've opined a on a lot of things, Dr. Fauci. Yeah, but I've never. This said is something that directly anything. impacts the spread of the virus, yeah. and I'm asking your 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 position on the protest. Yeah, I'm. Well, I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm telling you what it is the danger. And you can make your own conclusion about that. You should stay away from crowds, government, no matter where the crowds government stopped, are. Government has, uh, government has stopped people from going to work. In fact, just in New Jersey four days ago, Ian Smith, Frank Trombetta were arrested for opening up, for trying to operate their business, their gym. They were arrested. But I, my, my bet is if these two individuals own this gym were outside just in front of their gym, and all the people who were working out in their gym were outside protesting. They'd been just fine. But because they were in the gym working out, actually running their business, they got arrested. Do you think that's okay? You know, I'm not going to opine on who gets arrested and who does not. I mean, I, I, you get where I'm going. I'm telling you, as a public health official, I say crowds. Do you see the inconsistency, though, Dr. Fauci? There's no inconsistency, Congressman. There's what? No There's no inconsistency. So you're allowed to protest millions of people on one day in crowds, yelling, screaming, but you try to run your business, you get arrested? And if you stood right outside of that same business and protested, you wouldn't get arrested? Okay. You don't see an inconsistency there? I don't understand what you're asking me as a public health official to opine on who should get arrested or not. That's not my position. You could ask no, you've me as advocate, much as you you've want, advocated for and certain I'm not going to answer it. You've advocated for certain businesses to be shut down. I'm, I'm just asking you on your position on the protest. I'm I mean, not, I haven't seen one. We've heard a lot about hair salons. I haven't seen one hairstylist who, between haircuts, goes out and attacks police or sets something on fire. But we've seen all kinds of that stuff during protests, and we know the protest actually increased the spread of the virus. You've said that. I said crowds. I didn't say specifically. I didn't say protest do anything. So the protests don't increase the spread of the virus? I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. No, I, I, want, I, would, I just want an answer to the question. Do the protests increase the spread of the virus? I, I don't have any scientific evidence that anything. I can tell you that crowds are known, particularly when you don't have a mask, to increase the acquisition and transmission. No matter so what the So you don't have a is. position on whether the protest increased the spread of the virus or don't increase the spread of the virus? I'm saying that crowds, wherever the crowds are, can give you an increased probability that there's going to be acquisition and transmission. But do you understand Americans' concern 
protesting according, particularly according to the Democrats, is just fine, but you can't go to work, you can't go to school, you can't go to church. There's limits placed on all three of those fundamental activities, the First Amendment activities, but protesting is just fine. You know, the, gen I'm, the, gen uh, the gentleman's time has expired, but I'll just ask the gentleman to just think about his question and put it in reference to crowds that gather in political, at political meetings at fundraisers without masks on an all rig in Texas. Nobody wearing a mask, nobody social distancing, but a fundraiser. Right. Would that be problematic? With that, I'll yield five minutes to Mr. Foster.